Lesson 4.6, Associative Property of Multiplication. We learned in video 1.5 that the associative property is also called the grouping property. The associative property of addition states that we can change the grouping of the add-ends and the sum will stay the same. We can add 3 plus 2 and then add 8. We can add 2 plus 8 and then add 3. It's actually easier to add 2 plus 8 to make a 10 first and then add the 3. The associative property of multiplication states that when the grouping of the factors change, the product is the same. We can multiply 2 times 3, which is 6, and then multiply it to 5. That's equal to 30. Or we can multiply 5 times 2 first, which is 10, then multiply it by 3, which is 30. We always multiply inside the parentheses first, but it might be easier to make a 10 first and then multiply it by 3. Each car on a roller coaster has two rows of seats. Each row has two seats. And there's four cars in each train. So how many seats are on the train? We can use an array to show four cars with two rows of seats with two seats in each row. We have four times two times two in parentheses. We do two times two first, so that means we have four times four. There's 16 seats. There's four cars with four seats in each car. We can change the grouping with parentheses and the product is the same. We can group two times two together to make four. Four times four is 16. We can group the four and the two together to make an eight, and eight times two is equal to 16. It doesn't matter how the factors are grouped, the product is the same. We always multiply inside the parentheses first. We can use the commutative and associative properties to change the order of the factors and the grouping. So we can change the order and the grouping. Here we have a 5, a 6, and a 2. Parentheses are done first, so we have 6 times 2, which is equal to 12. That means we have 5 times 12. 5 times 12 is equal to 60. But it might be easier to group the 5 and the 2 together and multiply them first. We have 5 times 2, which is a 10, and then we do 10 times 6, which is 60. It's easier to multiply by tens. We can find the unknown factor by regrouping with the associative property of multiplication. For this one, it says 7 times 3 times some number is equal to 42. We can regroup it and do 7 times 3. 7 times 3 is equal to 21. That means 21 times some number is equal to 42. And if you think 21 plus 21 is equal to 42, that means we have two 21s. So 21 times 2 is equal to 42. By regrouping the factors, it helped us find the unknown factor. Now for this one over here, we have 20 times 2 times some number is equal to 0. We can regroup it as 20 times 2. That's equal to 40. Now we have 40 times an unknown factor is equal to 0. Do you remember back from chapter 3? In 3.7, we learned about the zero property of multiplication. And the zero property of multiplication says the product of 0 and any number is 0. That means this must be a 0 for it to equal 0. 40 times 0 is equal to 0. The order changes with the commutative property, 
The grouping changes with the associative property. The product stays the same with either the commutative or associative property. Each week, Bob works for two days for six hours each day and earns $5 an hour. Dave works for five days for two hours each day and earns $6 an hour. Bob says they earn the same amount. Is Bob correct? Does his statement make sense? Well, the first thing we need to do is circle the important numbers. So let's start with Bob. He works two days for six hours each day and earns $5 an hour. Now let's do Dave. Dave works for five days for two hours each day and earns $6 an hour. For Bob, we have two times six times five. Two times six is 12 times $5 an hour, that's $60. For Dave, we have five times two times six. Five times two is equal to 10 and 10 hours that he worked times $6 an hour is $60. And it makes sense because the same three factors were multiplied and they both earned $60. So Bob is correct. His statement did make sense. Now for this problem, they gave us a bar graph. A big dip train has four seats per car but the last car has only two seats. How many seats are on the big dip train? So let's take a closer look at our bar graph. It's titled Roller Coasters. We have the names of the roller coasters. There's the Big Dip, there's the Sonic, there's the High Line. We have our scale along the side, and that's how many cars there are per train. And the Big Dip has four cars, the Sonic has five cars, and the High Line has three cars. And the problem said a Big Dip train has four seats per car, but the last car has only two seats. We can draw an array to help us write a multiplication sentence. We know it has four cars. We know there's four seats per car. So the last one only has two seats. We can draw three groups with four in each group. Then we can draw another group that only has two in that group. We can write three cars times four seats per car plus one car times two seats. That would be three times four is equal to 12 plus one times two, which is equal to two. 12 plus two is equal to 14 seats. We could also use three times four plus two, which is equal to 14. We also could have used four cars times four seats per car and cross out two seats in the last car because it only has two, so we'd get rid of two and cross it out. Four times four is 16, minus two would be equal to 14. So remember, the associative property of multiplication is the grouping property and tells us that we can regroup factors to make multiplication easier and multiply facts we already know. And we can also change the order with the commutative property, can't we? And then change the grouping. And that the product will stay the same with either the commutative or associative property. I hope you're doing very well, and I hope you have a nice day. And I'll see you next time. Bye.